Hello, welcome to Wackaloop. Thank you for being here. Today, we are unboxing Sleeping Gods. Sleeping Gods, yes. By? Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games. And you, just before I turned the cameras on, was playing with this, and you were like... <laughs> <laughs> I was very happy to be able to unbox it again, because, spoiler alert, I've already played through the campaign at least once, maybe even another time since this video uh, was made, but... Uh, I'm really excited to look at it again. Yeah, you've already, you're a massive Ryan Lockett fan. We've done a series of Ryan Lockett videos here on the channel, including Now or Never, mm -hmm. which is uh, one of his most recent titles that we played together. And now we're gonna be opening up Sleeping Gods. Now, I have played this on TTS, but I've never seen it in person. I know his production quality is always insane. The, mm -hmm. the I mean, the artwork, the everything, everything is always fantastic. And this is probably one of his most successful or most popular titles to date. It, cer it certainly is. It came out this year, in the early, <clears throat> uh, got to Kickstarter backers in the, earlier in 2021. Yep. It, I have described it on several occasions on this channel, on quackalope.com as yep. Ryan Lockett's magnum opus. And he is, without question, the renaissance man of board games. Because not only, if you don't know already, Ryan designs this games, he does the artwork, he does the writing, he does everything, he owns the company. You know, he truly is a renaissance man in the world of board games. Yeah, it's fantastic. So, we're going to go ahead and dive into this, and you're going to talk about everything that we're pulling out, what you enjoy about the game, what you're excited about, why. Would you say this is in your top ten? This is in my top ten. In fact, this is like at least, uh, yeah, it's number two. I this actually, two. I actually just reordered my top ten on BGG, and Sleeping Gods came in at number two. What's May have come in at number three, actually. What's it behind? Above and below and Scythe. <laughs> so wait a minute, Scythe. There's no way Scythe beats this out. I haven't. I played more Scythe than I played more Sleeping Gods. I hear you that's, played. That's I hear you, but I've played many of those Scythe games with you, <laughs> and the joy experience during Sleeping Gods is more, is admittedly. More, but more. I've had Scythe for at least three yeah. years now. I've had Sleeping Gods for less than a year. So that's, and that's the, that's above the and below, which is another Ryan Lockett game, which is just my. Do you see this favorite. one passing either of those? Then I mean. Because it sounds like your ranking based a little bit off of like time that you've had with and amount of plays and everything like that. Right. It, it's hard not to factor that in when uh, you're evaluating things, and it it just it, it speaks to the quality of Sleeping Gods that I've only had it for less than a year, there. and it's already at number three. What is it so. that you're loving about Sleeping Gods? I'm so pop this one as well. Sure, sure. With. You do all the honors, by the way. Okay, I'll, I'll, you're okay. excited about unboxing this. I am excited. About I I unboxed another copy of Kingdom Death for the channel, ah. and it was the same type of feeling. It was like, I've already done this already once, done this, but it's, but so, it's so nice to do it again. So for those of you who don't know, you might notice if you buy this at retail, you might notice Sleeping Gods is in blue. We have it in gold. This is a Kickstarter copy. I don't know if there is any exclusive Kickstarter stuff in here. I suppose we'll see. But I suppose we'll see. Do you I, have a Kickstarter copy? I have, have a Kickstarter a, copy. Okay. Okay. I do. So I think the metal coins are going to be a bonus that you were able to get off Kickstarter. I think yes. you can buy them now as well, but yes. these are going to be the, the super classic honky. Do you have these? I do have these, okay. and these are among, among the best of the... They, uh, Red Raven pretty much does metal coins with all of its bigger games, and these, these always, are some of the best. They're always worth it, in my opinion. They do the, they do the yeah. right type of, like, not steel punch metal coins. Yeah. They do the heavy, aggressive, nice ones. All right, I, I'm just going to sit back and hang out. Okay. Talk about this game. Let's pull off the top. All right. So as you as you see here, we've got Sleeping Gods. We've got the base box right here. It has the lovely spotlight and finish. Some raised uh, the Hecatron here, which is a big enemy in the game. Which uh, spoilers? There may be spoilers. May not be. Who knows? It's a story based game, so you're just gonna have to deal with that as we lift off the box. Now it's a weird story based game because it's one that deals a little bit more with exploration. Yes. Sort of the, the nature of exploration and less about going down a direct campaign route, right? Uh, yes, but you know, it, it still is uh, it still is a campaign. You're not going to be able to play this game in one sitting. It it takes mul it's going to take multiple sessions because you're going to go through kind of three uh, kind of eras okay. of your time in in this in this world, which is different from our own. So cool. if we. What do we have here? We open this first, and we have the map book, which generally with Red Raven games, they, within the, with the last two big ones, Near and Far and Sleeping Gods, he's moved over to kind of this map exploration or this map book kind of feeling. 
And with Sleeping Gods, the whole world that you're inhabiting is in this map book, uh, including another map book in the expansion. And basically, have you played through the expansion? Uh, I, <laughs> oddly enough, I played about mm, a 20 hour campaign of Sleeping Gods and didn't even make it to the expansion area. Oh no. There, <laughs> so there is a lot of content in here. It is really hard to get bored. So this is how you're gonna keep tra track of, it's the innovative save feature between uh, events and plus a little, oh, that's so little cool. smaller map of the- Well, and the map shows how all the regions actually interconnect and intertwine with each other. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah, you can visit- The Wandering Sea. Yeah. It, it's, you were asking me earlier what kind of elevates this or makes it easier or better than above and below. It is a it is a fully, in addition to the worlds that are envisioned in near and far above and below, <laughs> and Islebound, which is the world of Azrum, Sleeping Gods happens in the Wandering Sea, which is completely separate. Mm. So this entire world is birthed just from this box, mm. which is amazing. What Jesse is looking through here is the storybook. The most integral. So we should just part. start reading through all of the flavor no, text. Is no, that... no, 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 no. What if no, I just jump no. a random section, just like I mean, one twenty point two. You can start reading it. It's probably not going to make a lot of sense to you. But... The museum tour guide, an old man with copper skin and a cheerful deposition, introduces himself <laughs> as Garland. <laughs> that was a, that was a quick hint. If you find yourself in section 120 something or other, then no you'll be able to remember that. That is an amazing won't. amount of lore and flavor yeah. text there. Oh, yes. Rule books. Okay. Yeah. This is the Wandering Sea. The gods have brought you here and you must wake them if you wish to return home. In Sleeping Gods, you and your three friends become Captain Sophie Otis and her crew lost in a strange world in 1929 on your steamship, the Manticore. You must work together to survive, exploring exotic islands, meeting new characters, and seeking out the totems of the gods so that you can return home. Sleeping Gods is a campaign game. I will uh, not read the overview of the flavor text. I just wanted to establish a little bit of the lore. Either way, you were saying. Yeah, sure. What was I saying? You were talking about the nature of the game and the way that it sort of expands. Right. It kind of expands on above and by being its own separate and realized world outside of the already established Asrim, which the forthcoming game Now or Never is also going to be a part of. Did you go through and check off your achievements as you played? I did. I maybe got uh, five of the... What? Do you say there's 50, 60 totems? <laughs> That's it. Uh, those are going to be important to uh, on waking the go uh, waking the gods okay. or not waking the gods or doing whatever kind of you want because that, in addition to being a campaign game where there is a story that you can follow, it's really kind of also a sandbox game. It really you don't have to follow a thread. You can go your own story way. You can go left, go right, go. Is this our player aid? That is a quick. That is, that is not a player. I mean, aid. I respect them trying to make a player. This, aid. Is, this is just a one sheet of the instru of the rule yeah, book, which is great to have. It's good to have on hand. How was the uh, quick start guide? Did it get you up and running very easily? It or? did. Okay. It did. It. If you haven't played it before, the quick start guide gets you through your first adventure and drops you in in the world of the Wandering Sea. So this, this is a Kickstarter uh, expansion. This is the Dungeons expansion, Ooh. which certain areas of the map, you're going to be able to go into these and explore these dungeons, kind of like a Legend of Zelda or uh, Dark Souls dungeons, and you're gonna be able to go through, and these have their own separate storybook as well, where there are more stories in here. There is so much content in this one little box that is quite, quite well done. And these are double-sided, so there's uh, dungeons on both sides, and then there are exclusive items that you can find in the dungeon that will help you in the wider world. And then, of course, our Adven adventure cards Adventure here. cards, yep. How are the adventure cards operating in the game? Adventure cards are kind of what the rewards you get for doing story story missions. So they're going to be sometimes they're going to be items, sometimes they're going to be people. They're all going to be they're generally going to be things that help you along in your uh, adventures in the Wandering Sea. Baggies always important. Hatnet bag of baggies. You know we make commission off of each one of these. Oh yeah. When I oh, was of twelve years old, I coined bag of baggies and introduced it to the world of board gaming. That was a smart choice. Yeah, and so now anytime you find a bag of baggies, it's just a quackalope patented bag of baggies. <laughs> uh, 
uh, and we make we make like ten cents off each bag. Well, that's good. It's not actually, bad. that bag of baggies there, the first one you held up is okay. actually nope. This, that the first one you held up. There you go. This bag of baggies is a special bag of baggies. Okay. This is part of the save system. Oh, you save that bag of baggies. Nice. What? Right. This is part of the save system, which we'll get back to. Now, in just if a you bit. find loose scattered bags that aren't in other bags, mm -hmm. that is not what we do. Oh, okay. We actually just do the bag of baggies specifically. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Specifically. So, what we have here is now part of the innovative storage solution of it's the box. It's gorgeous. There's just so much. This, this is also an exclusive stick kick, uh, Kickstarter item. Is the box, the wooden chest with the uh, magnetic clasp. So okay. if you get a retail version, it's just going to kind of come with a cardboard version. But it still works just as well, because inside this box, you're going to store all of your adventure cards, all of your item cards, all of your event cards are going to go in here. I can speak from experience that this box not only fits all the cards that come in the base game, but all the cards that come with Tides of Ruin, which is cool. the expansion. Now, what are these other little crates that we have here? These other, li other little crates are going to hold uh, game components. Certain boxes hold uh, different different items. Since this is a Kickstarter version, more coins. More metal coins. You never have enough metal coins. We have counters for command and damage, which uh, one of the mo one of the most innovative parts of this game is the combat mechanics, which are not something that really feature too much in other Red Raven games. Yep. So the the combat mechanics are very very interesting in this game. And then we've got uh, some character character cards here, and we've got the Fate deck. So the Fate deck kind of works as uh, the um, random chance encounter, <laughs> the Manticore. Another thing that is a Kickstarter exclusive is a painted manticore. I think the retail version is just going to have like a cardboard cutout manticore. So awesome, though. But yeah, this one comes with a little painted manticore, which is pretty cool. And it's always cool to be like on on the map and going like, and you move to your next <laughs> next spot. You were talking it's about the face incredibly system, detailed. Yes, the um, the, the uh, fate deck, which it works as the random kind of random chance. Uh, in the, in this game instead of a die. So what you're going to do is when you're encountering, uh, if you've played a Ryan Lockett game before, you know that you're going to come to a story decision mm -hmm. or you're going to have to make a test. And this uh, kind of gives you a random chance encounter. So it's numbered okay. one through six. You're going to flip one of those cards. You add that to the abilities your characters have, and then you either fail or you don't. The good thing, or you either succeed or you don't, got to be positive, right? Um, Not here. No. We either fail or we don't. One of the interesting things about um, Sleeping Gods is that even if you quote unquote fail, you're not you're not out of it. You're not yeah. out of it. You're still gonna get what happens. You're just gonna do it less efficiently. Hmm. So say like you had to put a rope over a so mast. It's fail forward. Exactly. It's fail forward. Say uh, it's you're putting a rope over a mast. You needed strength five and you got strength three. Well, it, the in the story description, it basically like. You tripped over a wooden board and you hurt your knee, so you take a point of damage. Mm. But you still get the rewards and you still move on in the story, so you don't you don't You're fail. never halting your progress. Yeah, exactly. I like that. We have used quests, which means this is our discard pile instead of ripping mm -hmm. things up. And what is this big old with more cards in here? Those are that is the enemy deck. Oh, cool. So the way the enemy deck works is when you have an encounter with enemies, it's going to tell you to pull cards. I believe the starting deck is cards 1 through 120. And you're going to take them, shuffle them, and arrange them out in a display, and you're going to kind of have the, the the battle start. Okay. So I don't know. How, how deep do you want to get into this? Do you want to show people what these look like? Whatever or? you're excited about. Whatever you want to talk about. Okay. Because this is this is legitimately one of the most innovative parts of this game. Cool. Is, is the combat combat system, which when you're first playing can be a little bit uh, a little bit tricky. But you just gotta. There's two things that you can do. You just you know uh, learn learn how to play. But also uh, there is like an uh, an easy mode or a beginner mode that is available on RedRaven.com that you can look up. That kind of modifies the rules a little bit, makes it a little, little, little bit easier. Now are all these characters that you can play as? These are all characters that you will play as oh, because cool. unlike other games, you don't choose which characters you're playing. You are playing 
all the characters all at the same time. Mm. That is another thing that this game has going for it over here on the ship, the right? This is where yes. you're going to be taking actions potentially to either interact with the main map or taking actions to interact with your ship, which allows you to move or heal or do other actions. Right. Okay. On, on your turn, you're always going to take ship action. You're always going to have an event, which is this... I had a deck of cards here with mm -hmm. events, but you know... You're going to have an event, and then you're going to have two actions that you can do, which include travel, moving on along the map, explore, find the number mm -hmm. in the book, have an encounter. You can take a market action, which allows you to buy items. You can have a port action, which that has a specific number yep. of things that you can do as well. Um, so this encounter here, can, uh, can we get the um, quick start guide? I think that's going to be the least spoilery thing for us here because it's very easy to find. So part part of the quick start guide includes it's the beginning of the battle. It's pull combat cards. Uh, one and two. One and two, excellent. So actually this is good because this includes two of the creatures that you're gonna run into most most in uh, this, this world, which are called Mythens. So when you have a battle, <clears throat> you take the cards face down, you shuffle them, and then you put them out and you match them to form a grid. I don't know how easy or hard it's gonna to be to see this, but as this kind of hexa, or this grid, this, um, uh, as we have now, we have a, uh, what do we have, an 18 by 18 mm -hmm. grid. And as you uh, take turns attacking and being attacked, you're going to put the damage counters down on <clears throat> whatever, char whatever character you're attacking and when you have covered over all of the hearts on that particular monster, then that monster gets defeated. Mm. Now, one of the interesting things here is because you notice they're set up as a grid, you always have to attack one monster. So say I'm gonna attack the Mythen Brute here. I'm starting my attack here. I deal three damage. I can do splash damage over and across. Over and across onto other monsters. So say, for example, like it was facing this way. You'd be able to deal that extra hit. I'd deal that extra hit this cool. way and do two hearts. Yep. So that's that's kind of a good thing. Now, one of the harder things to understand about this is like when you're, when you're battling, all the monsters are gonna hit you back. So you're gonna have to try and work real hard to make sure you're always kind of defended when they come back at you. Cool. So. Yeah, I remember I, the demo that I had, I remember that being a really, really interesting part of the game, uh, but a little bit confusing uh, the first time you deal with it, because you have to yeah. figure out the strategy around it. Uh, and here we have our other expansion. Are you familiar with what this expansion's adding in? It's just more... You the, said you didn't even make it here, right? The expansion just adds more. More stories, more map, more items, more everything. So I, when I said I didn't use any of the content, that's not entirely true. I just didn't go to any places on the map and I didn't use any of kind of the adventure cards, uh, adventure cards that came from here. There are events in here, which most definitely came up during my game. And uh, uh, also this comes with an arcade mode. If you're not super into the story, you can play arcade mode, which just gives you random encounters to play through, which you still get the flavor of the game. Uh, and then other adventure cards and other quest cards. I want to play through all this so bad. I'm so excited. Okay, so we're here towards the end of the unboxing video. Anyone that's watching this is just kind of celebrating this game with you at this oh, point, right? Yeah, I would say so. So why is this number two or three for you? What is it that like has struck a chord where you were willing to sit down for 20 plus hours and play through? It was a solo adventure that you were doing, right? Yeah. What, what captivated you so much about what Ryan's doing here that this was, was the game that kind of called to you? It all comes down to the story. The story is just beautifully told. And uh, previous games are not soloable, so this being able mm. to be a solo adventure really allowed me to dig into the meat of it without having to kind of without find a group. A permanent gaming group. Yeah, right? because, yeah, that's basically it. Like, I'm sure I would love Near and Far, but that's not a solo game, so I haven't dug into Near and Far as much as I have into Sleeping Gods, and I think in 20 hours, I may have gotten 10% of the content. Are you currently playing through a secondary campaign so you can explore areas that you didn't touch? Not yet, but every time I look at it on my shelf, I'm like, I could get that out and I could get it out and start cool. it up. I could start there up my cool. next campaign. 
I'm stoked. I'm so excited to dive into this. It is absolutely beautiful. I'm glad I was able to unbox it with you because you Me too. just had fun talking about all the pretty it's, things that we were able to see. It's so great. Uh, I didn't even tell you about the save system. I'll tell you later. Well, what's the save system? <laughs> well, these bags here are part of the save system because, like I said, you make notes yeah. on your cheat sheet. And then there are one of these kind of half bags for each character. So and that you just slot your character into everything they have in it? In the bag. Cool. That's saved. Cool. Very nice. <laughs> it's easy, though, because then you just grab so the bag and you bring it back out and you're ready to go again. Yep. Cool. So if you watch this point, thank you for hanging out with us. I assume you've already played Sleeping Gods or you're super compelled by it and probably buying it now, immediately. Uh, let us know down below, what is your favorite thing about this game or this series of games? What are you looking forward to in the future? And if you've already played it, if there was one addition or expansion or new module that Ryan was gonna introduce into this game system, what is it? What would you look for, either mechanically or storytelling wise? And feel free to say it in a way that keeps me, who's never played it, from knowing what you're talking about. <laughs> Either way, whatever the case, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thanks. <laughs>